Good evening, family and friends of Bonner Springs Church of the Nazarene. Welcome to this Wednesday evening devotional time. I, uh, I, I had to try to arrange things. I, there was a chance I, this, this time was going to be really close. I had to try to see what other options would be available, but I made it back and uh, got through my other appointment just fine. And uh, we're, we're back and ready. So that all that was for naught. But anyway, I hope you're having a really blessed day. It's a beautiful day out there today. A little windy, but a beautiful day. And appreciate you joining us tonight here on Facebook, uh, Facebook Live. I uh, Once again, please uh, give us a shout out. Uh, let us know you're watching, where you're watching from, who you're watching with, all those kind of all those kind of good things. We appreciate it. It lets us know, lets us know how to track uh, our al algorithms and all the changes that are happening with Facebook. So thank you very much for helping us to do that. I appreciate it very much. So uh, uh, those of you who are watching now live and those of you who are watching later uh, at a different time, I'm glad that it's available and you can do that. And we appreciate it. So still, if you're watching later, let us know that you're watching and who you're watching with all those, all those good things. So thank you once again for your support. Thank you for your uh, confidence in us and, and to keep coming back listening for us. So just the, the women's Bible study is getting ready to, to come on after us at 7 o'clock tonight as they uh, go through the Experiencing Contagious Joy. And they're having a great time with that. So uh, with Jeanette Stewart leading that, Susie, uh, you need to, if you want to be a part of it, you have to let them know so they can send you the link to get on the Zoom meeting. And then on Sunday mornings is uh, Charles Smith's and Jerry Poe as they lead that uh, adult Bible study on Sunday morning at 845. Then Monday night at 6 o'clock, Pastor Barb has a meeting, a uh, Bible study, and they're going through the book of Psalm, and they're having a great time there. And it's uh, both on Zoom as well as uh, in person. They have It's a hybrid model that they're doing with that Bible study. So uh, anyway... There's a, just a lot of the things that continue to go on and continue to happen, and I, I trust that you're doing doing well. Everybody is doing good, and uh, we especially, you know, we're thinking of uh, uh, Connie and Dave Pierce as they are uh, uh, helping take care of their daughter, uh, Gwendolyn, at, who broke both of her feet and is in recovery and can't be by anyway. She's living with them now as they're taking care of her, and it's uh, that's just it just really uproots their whole system. So they, we really need to hold them up in prayer and appreciate them so much. So remember them. Uh, Valdo, Valdo Padilla, he's down with his brother, was diagnosed with cancer. They did a surgery on him, and he's down in Arkansas visiting his brother. We want to pray for him as well. And, and just those who are in need of our support and, and help, those who have been in and out, of hospitals and doctors and I, I got a great report this week and I'm thankful for that most of you saw that on Facebook and uh, I appreciate your prayers and uh, thank the Lord for watching out and that uh, the Meniere's disease hasn't gone to to the right side that it's uh, just affected the left side and still hasn't gone over there I'm thankful for that um, they just said my the issues that I've been having is just my brain trying to figure out how to recognize those commands that it used to do it on the left side that the right side has to learn. So all those things. But thank you, and uh, let's let's continue to think of others and support them. And we want to say uh, a special shout out to Don Ellis as she is leaving us this week on on Friday is her day that she's leaving to go out. And so we, Don, we'll we'll miss you. Uh, we're so glad that we had this opportunity to be uh, together and to see you grow in your faith and grow in your uh, your relationship with God. And that's a uh, what a blessing, and we're so thankful for you. We praise God for you. Our prayers go with you, and we trust God to, to be with you and continue your growth in Him as you uh, as you go to Michigan. And we will be uh, be praying for, for Curtis and for Ron, as they will miss Don terribly, and uh, as anybody would, but in a special way. So we thank you for that. Uh, God bless you. Also, Kayleen Wiley, uh, Jack and Janet's uh, daughter, younger daughter, is uh, had a blood clot in her calf that goes the whole length of her calf and she's doing better but it's still under treatment so we want to pray for her as well 
and the just the, uh, Sarah Jane and Ramona humans they've been uh, quarantined again at their place and just uh, it gets discouraging so well let's lift them up and pray for them and others who have been struggling and having some issues we, we just pray for them so uh, think of somebody that you haven't seen for a while maybe you haven't uh, heard from them in a while or about them and pray for them and maybe you could reach out to them and say hi and ask if there's something you can help them with and do. <clears throat> so we, we rejoice with Pastor Griffin. And Sunday night, he was able to receive his minister, district minister's license at the district uh, assembly service. And we're so proud of him and excited for him and uh, thankful for that. Thankful that we're having, we have him on our team as our youth pastor and for the teens as they're doing a great job. Pastor Barb, want to pray for her. She had a... a um, a cousin who is her age, maybe a little older than she is, that was diagnosed with uh, cancer here a little, just a little while ago, and then um, last week was put on hospice, and then Sunday, right after church, she sent me a text saying that he had passed away Sunday, and so Pastor Barb is up in Iowa for with the family, with her family up there in Iowa, and her dad um, for the funeral service that's happening today. And so we want to pray for Barb as she as she travels back and as she ministers to the family there as well and praying for her family at the, during this time of loss. So a lot of things that are happening and a lot of people to pray for. But God's on the throne and he knows where we are and we're, we're delighted with that. Speaking of that, let me draw your attention to, uh, to your Bible. I, uh, I was drawn to Isaiah chapter 46. Isaiah chapter 46. I know last week we talked about, out of Galatians, talked about God's timing. And uh, so I kind of wanted to continue that thought about God's timing. So I've, I've titled this one God's Timing Number 2. Um, but it's out of Isaiah chapter 46. So if you'll look at Isaiah chapter 46, there's only 13 verses in the chapter. And uh, so it it's not real long, but it, it, it talks about, you know, the, it starts off, it's talking about the gods of Babylon. And it, the very first verse talks off, starts off with Bel bows down and Nebo stoops low. Those are names of, uh, of the god, the Greek, Greek gods. And the chief deity of Babylon was um, Marduk was the chief deity, and another name for Marduk or Marduk was Bel. They just called him Bel, which was the Canaanite equivalent of Baal. You heard about the prophets of Baal that Elisha, you know, had to uh, had to deal with in the, uh, the offering that he prayed, and the prophets of Baal all, you know, they, so they couldn't get the fire down, but Elisha did, so that, that happened. That's what, this is the equivalent of Baal, um, back earlier and uh, their idols born of beasts and burden the images they carried about are burdensome a burden for the weary they stoop and bow down together unable to rescue the burden they themselves go off into captivity so that's that's the word of God through Elijah, through Isaiah that he's talking to the children of Israel about these gods of Babylon and then he says in verse 3 God says but listen to me Listen to me, you descendants of Jacob, all the remnant of the people of Israel, you whom I have upheld since your birth and have carried since you were born, even to your old age and your gray hairs. I am he. I am the God. I'm the one. I am he who will sustain you. I'm the one who will sustain you. So don't be sidetracked with all these other gods that are coming at you that they're that they're throwing out here and they're building they're building the um, idols to and for and so he says i i am he i'm the one who will sustain you i have made you i will carry you i'll sustain you i'll rescue you then he then he goes on verse five who with whom will you compare me or count me an equal to to whom will you liken me that we may be compared and then he then he refers back to the uh gods and the idols of of Babylon that some pour out gold from their bags and weigh out silver on the scales that they hire a goldsmith to make it into a god 
and they bow down and they worship this God. They lift it to their shoulders and carry it and they set it up in its place and there it stands, the idol. From that spot, it cannot move. Even though someone cries out to it, it cannot answer. It cannot save them from their troubles. It just it can't do anything. It's an inanimate object. It's just there. And then God says, remember this. Remember this. Keep it in mind. Take it to heart, you rebels. Remember the former things, those things of long ago that all through your history that God has worked in their past. Remember those things. Because I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me. I make known the end from the beginning. <laughs> from ancient times, what is still to come. Wow, I, I, I just felt like we needed to hear that again today. Here in our day, there's so much stuff that's going on. To remember, whatever God has been with us through Thick and thin, from way back up till now, God has still been with us. He says, I am God. There is no other. I am the God. There's no one like me. I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times, what is still to come. I say, God says, I say my purpose will stand. And I will do all that I please. I, I tell you, these, these three verses, verse 10, 11, and 12, are the, are the three verses that really, really stood out to me and got to me. I make known the end from the beginning, from the ancient times, what's still to come. I say my purpose will stand. I like that. Count on that. And will do all that I please. From the east, I summon a bird of prey from a far off land, a man to fulfill my purpose. This is what it gets. Listen to this phrase right here. What I have said, that I will bring about. <laughs> what I have said, that I will bring about. <laughs> what I have planned, that I will do. That's God's word, my friends. Listen to me, he says, you stubborn, stubborn hearted. You who are now far from my righteousness. I'm bringing my righteousness near. It's not far away. And my salvation will not be delayed. I will grant salvation to Zion. My splendor to Israel. Well, that's, that's the word right there. But the, this phrase that really sticks out to me in verse 11, that second part of verse 11, when he says, what I have said, what I have said, that I will bring about, and what I have planned, that I will do. You see, it's all, it's all about God's timing, right? It's all about his timing. And you know, God has a plan. God has a plan for your life and my life. And that plan requires certain things, certain things to happen at a particular time in, in that plan. And since God sees the big picture, and we're just working with limited information, we must trust Him. You understand what I'm saying? Since God sees the big picture and we're dealing with such limited information, we must trust Him. Even when you don't see how it's going to all come together, trust Him, brothers and sisters. That's the song we sing at church here recently. We've sung it a couple of times about the way maker. We sing that song, way maker. He is a way maker, you know, the promise keeper. He he, he doesn't be, and it said, part of that song, it says there in the, in the chorus, a, a bridge, it says, even when you can't see him, he's working. Even when you don't feel it, he's working. He never stops. He never stops working. That's what it's about. You see, God, 
God can take the loss of a relationship or the loss of a job or whatever loss and make it work for your good. God can take it and make it work for your good. The trouble is, while he's doing all this, we can feel pretty uncomfortable and sometimes downright miserable, actually, with what's happening while he's working on it. In fact, let me just let me just bring back to your memory that 782 years before the birth of Jesus, the prophet Micah, the prophet Micah in the Old Testament, Micah chapter 5 and verse 2 actually, said 782 years before the birth of Jesus, Micah said, Micah chapter 5 verse 2, said that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. You remember that? He said in, in Micah the, that the Messiah was going to be born in Bethlehem. But Mary and Joseph were living in Nazareth. So how could that happen? So how did, how did God solve the problem? Well, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken. And you read it over in, in Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, verse 3 through look what look what Luke says Luke chapter 2 verse 3 through 7 all returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census and because Joseph was a descendant of King David he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea David's ancient home and he traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee and he took with him Mary his fiance who was now obviously pregnant and while they were there the time came for her baby to be born, and she gave birth to her first child, a son. <laughs> you see how that happened? 782 years before the birth of Jesus, Micah said he's going to be born in Bethlehem, but they lived in Nazareth. And then it just so happened they had to go to Bethlehem to register for the census, and there they went. And it the prophecy was fulfilled. God made it happen. I have a question for you today. Are you worried about the future? Are you worried about the future? Are you worried what's going to happen tomorrow, next week, next month, next year? Worried about the future? You say, well, pastor, I'd rather not use the word worry. I'm, I'm concerned about the future. Yeah, I, I hear you. But you're worried. Worried about the future. Well, the psalmist David said in Psalm 37, verse 34, he said, don't be impatient for the Lord to act. Keep traveling steadily along his pathway, and in due season, he will honor you with every blessing. Isn't that something? That's what the psalmist said. That's what the psalmist said. Psalm 37, verse 34. Don't be impatient for the Lord to act. Keep traveling steadily along his pathway, and in due season, he will honor you with every blessing. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? So, my brothers and sisters, my dear friends, relax. <laughs> relax. The God who arranged for his son to be born into the right family at the right time and in the right place is looking out for you today and for me. You can trust. He's got a plan for you. He's got a plan for me. We have to trust him with that plan. Don't be impatient waiting on him to act. He's working on our behalf even when it doesn't seem like it, when we can't see it. He's working on our behalf. <laughs> that's what he's that's what Isaiah is telling God is telling the people here. In Isaiah, that's what he's telling the Israelites. What I have said, that I will bring about. What I have planned, that I will do. Trust his timing. Trust him. Trust his plan. We can do that. We can do that, right? You know, just as I was talking about this, an old, another old song just popped into my head. 
Maybe you'll remember it. If you do, sing it with me, okay? It's, it's an old chorus. It goes like this. Got any rivers you think are uncrossable? Got any mountains you cannot tunnel through? God specializes in things thought impossible. And he will do what no other power can do. God, any rivers you think are uncrossable. God, any mountains you cannot tunnel through. God specializes in things thought impossible. And he will do what no other power can do. <laughs> Amen. Brothers and sisters, trust God's timing. Trust his plan. He's working it all out according to his word. He's working it all out. And we can trust him because he knows what he's doing. Amen. You know, the, the old... Uh, the old advertisement we used to see, I think it was uh, Allstate Insurance. It said, you're in good hands with Allstate. Well, we're in good hands, brothers and sisters, because he knows, God knows how to take care of his own. We're in his hands. Trust him completely. We can do that. Amen? Let's pray. Father God, thank you for your word. Thank you that it speaks to us right where we are, right where we live. You know exactly what we need. Thank you for the encouragement you give to that we can trust you, that you know what's going on and what you said you will do and your plan. You, you have a plan and, and you will do what you've planned. You'll see it come about. It may not be the way we expect. It may not be the way we think it will happen. But you are still working. So help us, Lord, to completely trust you. Give us peace. Give us assurance that we know you are in charge. And you have ways of showing that to us. And we're so thankful for that. So God, I just pray you would wrap your arms of love and grace and mercy around each of us. Draw us close to yourself. Those who need a special touch tonight, those who, who need a special touch of encouragement, uh, Lord, be with them. Draw them close, I pray. <laughs> we need you now more than we've ever needed you before. We need you now. So go with us. Keep your hand upon us and bring us back together again as we come, as we approach the Lord's day again. Lord, that we would just be open to you and you would have your way in us and through us. We ask this in Jesus' strong name. Amen and amen. Well, thank you, brothers and sisters. Thanks for giving us the time. Thanks for watching with us and, uh, and putting up with my voice again and again. Thank you so much. And just, I trust these words will be a blessing to you and use them that way. We'll look forward to uh, the Bible studies that are happening. We'll look forward to Sunday morning again. And also, let me just put out the word that we need you to register. Let us know. Please let us know that if you can come on October the 10th is the witnessing workshop. And uh, let us know so we can plan for you that day. Uh, we're planning lunch as well as notebooks. So please, and, and we're just asking for $10. If you, could, if you could give us $10, that would help us defray the cost of that, putting the notebooks together and, and, uh, and the lunches. So thank you so much for being here. Dr. Shaver, is, is, I've been hearing great reports where he's done this before, and uh, he's going to be coming to us, and we're, we're just grateful for that. So grateful that we have that opportunity to be a host uh, here for our mission area at, at our church. So uh, just remember that. We, we want you to plan to be with us. And then that following Sunday, we'll have both Sunday morning and Sunday night, as well as Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night. And uh, we'll be we'll be together. So I, you can go to our website. All that information will be on there as well. I think we're going to put something here on Facebook as well. So uh, we'll look forward to that. Well, until then, we'll see you Sunday morning at 10 o'clock for our regular worship time together. May God richly bless you, brothers and sisters. And until then, take care of yourselves and each other. God bless.